Hello everyone, so this is GS Mains paper 3, September 2017, part 2. So the seventh topic uh, overall and the first topic for today is West Management Rules, right? And this is a uh, subtopic of topic 9, infrastructure. Fine. So the West Management Rules continued to be ignored even a year after they were notified. And when they were notified, they were notified in 2016 under Solid West Management Rules, right? Now the thing is what has happened, why this particular thing is in news. So collapse of a great wall of garbage in East Delhi's Gajipur area, sweeping people and vehicles into a nearby canal. Fine. Now urban local government is not treating 62 million tons of waste generated. Remember this data. Data helps, right? Data makes your answer better. So urban local government not treating 62 million tons of waste generated annually in the country as a potential resource. They can be used as an organic waste, but urban local government is not able to do that. Now, see, see, remember this thing, this thing, this particular topic, you can put in top means paper one also under urbanization. So overlapping is there, right? Fine. Now, organic waste that can uh, that could, sorry organic waste that could help clean cities and feed small and affordable household bio FC, small and affordable household biogas plants is simply being thrown away. So all these things, all these waste, they are not waste; they are actually a resource, and they are an organic resource, right? And it could help green cities and feed small and affordable household biogas plants, but they are simply being thrown away. Now, why Rwanda and Kenya have written? There is a reason for it. So ironic that while some countries such as Rwanda and Kenya, Kenya, sorry, have introduced stiff penalties for use of flimsy plastic bags, India is doing little to prevent its uses. See these small countries these so-called what do you say third world countries fine but again Kenya has developed somewhat so that these countries have introduced stiff penalties for use of flimsy plastic bags but we are doing very little although in Delhi you are now seeing little bit what do you say restriction in use of plastics but still no penalties as yet right so that is the whole thing fine so do remember about solid waste management rules 2016 do remember that these are organic waste right do remember that 62 million tons of waste is generated annually and they are not being treated in a manner or used in a manner that it should be or they should be used and do give a mention of Rwanda and Kenya whenever waste management or any topic or any question on waste management comes fine let's move on to the next topic so that is demonetization a disaster very hot news always remains in hot news right and it's a very arguable news if you start arguing with some person who's pro-government and some person who's anti-government right so this argument is never ending whether it is a disaster or not but the thing is what data is saying data is saying that yeah indeed you can you can tilt in the favor that it has not yielded result as it was meant to right and there was some policy implementation failure right fine let's talk about it so again, this is a part you can keep it in topic one Indian economy and topic three money laundering, black money. So there also you can club it. So again, fine. Now there are three views regarding demonetization is a failure or not. So the first view is saying that if extinguishing black money was the intention of the move, not even 0.01% of that has been achieved. It was carried out in an error, means it was carried out on incorrect premise that black money means cash. Now black money is a result of black income generation which is produced by various means which are not affected by the one so shot squeezing out of cash. Just because you have, what do you say, one time you do it, it won't yield purpose. If you want to do it, keep on doing it at regular intervals. But that will give tremendous shock, right? So that is not at all desirable. Big failure that carried out, and the first view is saying that, big failure that carried out without preparation and caused big losses to the unorganized sector. But still that unorganized sector believes that something will happen in the future and it is for their good only. But yeah, tremendous loss has been done to the unorganized sector still. If you go to the villages, you will realize that payment are not being done in full because they are saying that they don't have the money yet. So all these things are taking place in villages, right? Go into the hinterland areas and you will realize. Now, the second view is saying that, a second view is supporting demonetization and it is saying that the subsystem needed a major disruption to make a clear break from ancien regime of rampant tax evasion and crony capitalism as well as dysfunctional government. So we needed a break from the ancient regime or the ancient, uh, what do you say, ancient system of rampant tax evasion, crony capitalism and dysfunctional government. And demonetized, uh, demonetization did just that. And it is a move towards cashless economy and what very important thing which they are saying, this is the second view saying that there's a future beyond the present. Don't, don't just look at the present. There's future future beyond the present. And right now we are seeing all the demerits, but believe me, what they are saying, believe, believe them that there will be a great thing which will be coming up in future. And this demonetization will be a very positive and will, will yield a very positive outcome in future. So they are saying that don't, don't just look at the present. 
Now let's talk about the third view. So third view is saying that enough, there's, there are enough work that suggests that people with that money hold a very small proportion of it in cash. They hold it in gold, they hold it in real estate, or they, what do you say, they do, uh, what do you say, they, they transfer it to Mauritius, Singapore and all those things. So they are saying that it, it's, it's a proven fact that very, that all the people who are indulged in like black money holding or who are indulged in black marketing, they hold a very small portion of it in cash. So this policy is was at variance with the intent ab initio. From the beginning, this whole policy was at variance, right? Now the thing is, all of us vilified, all of us have vilified RBI and banking system. We always like, um, um, RBI governor was, uh, what, what do you say? He was uh, threatened at West Bengal airport when he was there in, in November, December, right? He was like all those slogans were raised against him, but very few questions are being asked of income tax authorities. So he's saying that instead of asking questions from RBI, ask questions from income tax authority because they are knowing uh, how much money is coming back into the system, who is depositing what amount. So they, it's their responsibility to track responsible persons who are is still doing, or what do you say, was still indulging some black marketing phenomena, right? Or was still, it means what do you say, uh, depositing much more money in their account. So it's the question needs to be asked of income tax authorities. So that is what they are saying. This is the overall view of the dividend monetization. So again, whenever we are writing any answer, we have to write negative, positive, and way forward. So way forward should be that, yeah, it was a move which was, what do you say, which was done in good uh, intentions, but that intentions has not yielded result as far as data goes, right? But still, that was a commendable move. That's what, that's what we can say, right? Fine. We cannot be too critical about demonetization. Fine. Now the next topic is NPA small topic and me small topic right now. This is a very, very big topic and very hot topic. You can keep it in Indian economy. So what this article is saying that what is happening with non-performing asset is there are too many delays. Court cases are going on and on and on and all those things happen. So bankers are worrying that appeals to other courts and workload at NCLT. What is NCLT? National Company Law Tribunal. So they are worrying that these all appeals to other courts and workload at NCLT may push deadlines further, right? So they may not get their money back. So it has to be done at a speedy means holding is a process. The process has to be made much more speedier and as compared to what it is right now. So you can write this in one of the points of NP is that whole process is a very time consuming process and it has to be made speedier. Fine. Okay. So the next topic is railway safety. Very important topic. It is at a part of topic 9 infrastructure. You can keep it in a part of topic 12 disaster management. See, in topic 12, I have club, biodiversity, environment and disaster management. So even environment will also be there in topic 12 only. So this is a very important topic. We'll talk about what is railway safety. How did it come about? Why they are talking about railway safety? Then we will talk why does it matter? And then we will talk what next? That is what is the way forward? So all in all, it will cover every aspects of railway safety. So first of all, what is it? So, string of derailment has happened in the last couple of weeks. Example, Puri, Haridwar, Utkal Express. Now, thing is, although, see, understand this, although total serious train accidents has declined from 135 in 2014-15 to 104 in 2016-17, derailments has gone up from 63 to 78 during the same periods. So, total serious train accidents have reduced, but derailment has increased from 24, means 14-15 to 16-17. So, this thing has happened. Fine. Remember these data, even if you're not remembering data, just remember that derailment has increased, although serious accident has reduced. Now, why we are talking about this and what are the causes of these derailments? So there are the major causes are first is unmanned level crossing. We'll talk what is unmanned level crossing. And the second is derailment due to track defects. So what is unmanned level crossing? First of all, what is level crossing? Level crossing is a place where railways are interse intersecting with a road or any path, right? Uh, instead of like when railway is going up or under, right, under bridges. So that is different. But level crossing is when railway is intersect intersecting with a road or a path. You must have seen it, right? Unmanned level crossing means there's no person guiding those un means level crossing, right? So that is unmanned level crossing. And that is also a reason for accidents. Now, some day ago, an accident happened when a guy was... What, what, what do you say? He was passing a railway track and um, putting his earphone on, right? And there was no one to guide, right? And if there were, it was manned, if that particular area was manned, that accident could have been avoided. So unmanned level crossing is also one of the major reasons for railway accidents. Now, why does it matter? Because former railway minister Suresh Prabhu had announced a mission zero accident. So he has announced a mission zero accident in his last budget of 2016-17. But that mission zero accident is still a distant goal. Now, what next? What is the way forward? So the thing is, the railway ministry has ordered elimination of all unmanned level crossing within a year. So they have said that all these unmanned level crossing should be eliminated. And railway board has also been directed to stop production of conventional integral coach factory coach means 
coach have three coaches that topple over one another in case of derailment so they are saying that railway board has been directed to stop production of conventional coaches right which topple over one another instead they want to produce means or they want to promote this lhb coaches that is link hoffman bush coaches right it it is it is made by germany and it it is it is a very reliable coach you can read more about it so maybe they will promote this lhb but right now they are saying that they want to stop producing this conventional integral coach factory coaches so this was about railway safety so do talk about whenever railway safety comes do talk about unmanned level crossings do talk about talk about derailment due to track defects do talk talk about this mission zero accidents and all these things fine fine now let's talk about economy and ecology right topic 12 in government and small topic uh, just try to understand simple article but it was written in a well intention manner so we'll talk about it so thinkers such as wonder poly and idris abar kan argue that economy and ecology do not need to be seen in opposition it's not like economy and ecology are lying at the opposite end of spectrum no it's not like that they can act together so nature holds something far more precious than wood coal and minerals this something is the ecosystem itself and the infinite wealth it represents so economy should strive to promote or in conserve ecology instead of harming it right because both has their own benefits and if they are working in tandem then only both economy and ecological ecology will be getting benefited so that is what gunter poli and idris aberkane is summarizing fine so you can talk about it okay now let's move to the last topic for today that is credit rating market uh, what the article is saying that again this is topic on indian economy and eight liberalization so indian credit credit rating market is an oligopolistic one due to high barriers to entry what is oligopolistic market see when you talk read about micro economy now you will talk we read about these kind of markets like oligopolistic economy and all those things so oligopolistic means when there are very few number of sellers that market which is dominated by few, very few number of sellers so that is an oligopolistic market so here also in indian credit rating market is also very oligopolistic there are very few credit rating, credit rating agencies in our country so and why it is happening because there are very huge barriers to entry so what is the way forward the way forward lies in making it easier for new players to enter the credit rating space and compete against incumbents right this will go a long way towards making credit rating agencies actually serve creditors rather than borrowers so this is about credit rating market we'll talk more about it because these kind of topics will keep on coming now one more topic one more small topic which i have read i just want to discuss with you there was uh, there was a national park which was called devaliya national park it was in news so any idea where it is it is actually in gujarat so do remember it devaliya national park in gujarat bhavsa tiger reserve in west bengal important from prelims point of view fine so i'll keep until here only there are again two three more parts which will be there in gs paper 3 because there were too many articles right and too many important articles plus i have summarized some important articles from other sources also so we'll cover all of them fine thank you